All eyes are on Kentucky. Coming up, we'll take you to Churchill Downs for a day at the races. Also ahead, we're learning about the family killed in a horrific crash in southern Kentucky. Wish things would turn out better, but uh, we're just hoping the best for him. Months after Richmond firefighter Jason Campbell was injured in an ATV accident, his community continues to rally around his family. We'll show you how coming up. Tracking, alerting, protecting. This is WKYT News at 6. We're getting close to the greatest two minutes in sports. Thanks for watching on this Derby Day. I'm Kristen Kennedy. Anticipation for the 141st Kentucky Derby is building. WKYT's Lee K. Howard joins us first tonight with a look at what's happening at Churchill Downs. Hey, Kristen. Yeah, it's already been a busy day at Churchill Downs, already leading up to the big race. It's considered the deepest field in quite some time. Let's head out to Rob Bromley, who's on hand at Churchill Downs. Hey, Rob. Well, I'll tell you, Lee Kay, the excitement has been building all day long. It's a long, long day, and this is the warmest day we've had for the Derby in some time, with a temperature pushing into the mid-70s. Now, it will be a field of just 18 for the Derby, the scratch of international star this morning. A problem with his left front foot, certainly a big, big disappointment for the owners, Ken and Sarah Ramsey. Who do you like in the race? Well, I think it's very, very hard to go against the two horses that Bob Baffert has, the favorites, Dortmund and American Pharaoh. Looks like American Pharaoh will go off the favorite. These two have run extremely well. As for a good price in the race, I think I might go with Upstart, Materiality, or Danzig Moon. But when we come back in sports, I'll give you my pick for Derby 141. Post time at 644. There is not much longer to wait now. At Churchill Downs, Rob Bromley, Lee K, back to you. Okay, Rob, we'll look forward to hearing your pick. I'll also give you my pick as well. That's coming up in just a little bit in sports. Kristen? Looking forward to that. Thank you, Lee Kay. Many tuned in to watch Derby coverage, not only for the race, but also for the fashion and flair that comes with it. WKYT's Rebecca Smith donned her Derby attire and talked with fans in Louisville. Today was just a beautiful day here at Churchill Downs for the 141st annual Kentucky Derby. You could not ask for better track conditions. That means a potential for a record crowd here. Folks in the infield are all pros at staking their spot among the thousands and thousands of Derby lovers. Everybody comes back in town for the Derby week, the festivities, it's all, you know, it's all week long. First timers had a lot to take in, like this lady from Texas who took a whole new approach to her hat. Just the excitement as the horses pass and you can feel the ground shaking and then going to the uh, inner field. While everyone feels like a celebrity on Derby Day, on the red carpet you catch all the actors, models, athletes, designers, even Nick Lachey and Vanessa Manello. The biggest thing that, the, that accomplished was this bow tie. It was the tie one or not tie one. Our cameras caught Star Jones, actor Drew Waters, Breaking Bad's Dean Norris, and Joey Fatone all in their Derby best. I like it. And that's how it went on. So you like Prince? <laughs> yeah, I do. Love, love. It's Derby. You got to wear different things. Fun, crazy, outrageous, I think. And all the hats are freaking amazing. Of course, we can't leave out the biggest stars of the day the horses. This right here is another one of the crazy hat and really outfit selections that we've seen throughout the day. It really has seemed to be a lot of color coordinating with hats and outfits. But really, the main theme of the day seems to be that bigger is better when it comes to the hats. For a look at more fashion photos and just general photos of the day, go to our website, WKYT.com. You can also check out our Facebook page for that. Reporting from Churchill Downs, Rebecca Smith, WKYT. Rebecca looks like she's having a lot of fun out there. Some Kentuckians like to go out and watch the races in smaller settings, though. Keeneland provides them with a different derby experience. WKYT's Mike Linden soaked up the sunshine in Lexington. Even without live racing, more than 20,000 people came to Keeneland to watch the most exciting two minutes in sports today. There's over 1,000 TVs in the facility, including two big screens in the paddock. So uh, if you want a little lower key experience, Keeneland's the place for you. Fans have been in the paddock since the gates opened at 9 o'clock to get a good spot for the races. 
While there is no live racing here at Keeneland today, there's still a Keeneland representation in the Kentucky Derby. Of the original 22 entrants to the Derby, 14 of them are Keeneland sales graduates. Derby Day isn't an official holiday, but it might as well be for some race fans. You're doing a try, so you pick. Nancy, yes. Nancy Smith and her sisters have been coming to Derby festivities for years. It's a celebration. Uh, it's celebrating spring, it's celebrating Keeneland, the running of the roses. Uh, it's, it's awesome. It's great fun. Even for the casual horse racing fan, today is the Super Bowl in early May. I just always look forward to all the decorations. I look forward to the preparation, the cooking, all the traditional foods, and it's just it's just all it's all fun. In Lexington, Mike Linden, WKYT. Celebrations are stretching throughout the Commonwealth today, even in Frankfurt. Vendors lined the streets downtown this afternoon. Visitors tried different foods and enjoyed the live music. And children got a chance to see what life is really like as a jockey. Everyone between the ages of 2 and 12 participated in the Derby Dash. I mean, you mentioned Kentucky, and the first thing that comes to a lot of people's mind is the Derby. You know, it's watched all around, and we've hosted Canadian Derby parties to, you know, parties in Florida and to anywhere. And I love that, it, you know, it's a nationwide known event. Fastest two minutes in sports, but great two minutes. Organizers tell us they will start planning next year's Derby party tomorrow. Sunshine and warm temperatures are making for a perfect Derby day. Meteorologist Jim Caldwell joins us now with a first look at the forecast. Jim, I know you're going to say it. It's off to the races with this weather. <laughs> it is. And then what we're talking about there is the temperatures are going to keep running up as we head through the rest of the day today, tomorrow, and especially next week, mid 80s. A very good possibility out there right now. It is just gorgeous. You've got the decorative clouds hanging out with us, the sunshine, and of course, those warm conditions. We are right now sitting at 73 degrees out of the airport. I mean, just a very comfortable day for you. Winds coming in out of the south now at around six miles per hour. We look all across Kentucky, and you're going to see, again, just those decorative clouds showing up here and there. Nothing major, no big cloud deck kind of hanging out, keeping us away from the warmth. Low and mid 70s are showing up everywhere. 77 right now in Louisville, and that is one of the warmest they've had there for the Derby in about 10 years, maybe a little bit longer. If they can get closer to uh, 78 degrees here, that'll certainly be the warmest one they've had in a long time. But very warm anywhere. You look. But the folks of the forecast, we're not talking about the Derby from here on because things are about to change for us. We are talking about summertime weather, of course. It's not summer yet. We still have to go through this month and get into next month. We'll take a closer look at all this warmth coming up in just a few minutes. We're learning new details tonight about the horrific crash in southern Kentucky that killed a woman, her two children, and her three grandchildren. That crash happened around 6 last night on Highway 90 West, just outside Monticello. Police say a car hit a pickup truck pulling a trailer. The coroner tells us Tina Proctor, Sarah Elizabeth Ellis, Nathan Proctor, Christian Barnhouse, Zoe Bertram, and Jace Bertram all died in the wreck. Two other adults went to the hospital. The Wayne County coroner says the family was from Monticello. A Powell County man is facing charges tonight after police say he was drunk driving on a lawnmower. Officers arrested Billy Strange last night on 2nd Avenue in Clay City. Police had him take a breathalyzer test, and they say his blood alcohol level was almost two times the legal limit. They want to spread awareness today. Groups gathered in downtown Lexington to make signs and march in unity. This comes after the death of Freddie Gray, who died in police custody in Baltimore last week. Those who are marching in Lexington say they just want to see change. Today is a national day of action, rallying, protest, in solidarity with um, Baltimore and the Baltimore uprisings and what has occurred there most recently with Freddie Gray. Um, and on a national level, this is kind of being uh, seen as the beginning of what we're calling Black Spring, which is um, the next step in movements that began with the murder of Mike Brown in Ferguson. More than 50 people showed up for today's rally. The Fayette County Board of Education called a special meeting for this weekend to discuss its contract with a firm hired to search for a superintendent. The CEO of the search firm, firm Pro Act Search, is now the subject of a federal investigation. School Board Chairman John Price says the board needs time to look at the allegations against the Pro Act CEO and determine what the next step should be. 
The board says they did not know about the allegations before hiring the search for firm. The special meeting is set for 8 tomorrow morning. Friends and family of a firefighter injured in a wreck helped raise money for his recovery today. Last weekend, we told you about a fundraiser for Jason Campbell. Today, they held another auction in Richmond. Hillary Thornton talked to Campbell's family about the benefit. Jason Campbell dedicated his life to helping others as a firefighter. Now dependent on others, his community is making sure that both Campbell and his family are taken care of. He had gotten out of the ATV to help some little kids get in out of the rain. So when he got back in, he forgot to fasten his seatbelt. He had an accident and he was ejected from the ATV. It drug him down the mountain, flipping. And every time it would flip, it would land on top of Jason. Suffering two brain injuries, Dr. Doctors telling Campbell he would never return to work. What we have to deal with now, we're really thankful because we didn't get called to go to the hospital to identify a body. With medical bills mounting up, community members came together on Saturday perusing donated items, auctioned off to benefit badge number 807. It's a good feeling you knowing people come out and support the local firefighter. The man running Saturday's show as auctioneer, Campbell's former boss, Chief Wayne Long. We greatly miss him, wish things would turn out better, but uh, we're just hoping the best for him right now. Supporting their brother, who may no longer run towards danger, but certainly still exemplifies the heart of a firefighter, showing courage each day he braves this new battle. It's sad, but still we're blessed. It's great for everyone to help like they have. The family says they are grateful for any help they can get. For information on how you can help, visit our website, WKYT.com. In Richmond, Hillary Thornton, WKYT. The family raised hundreds of dollars through that auction.